One fateful day in early 2021, three friends known as S5, Org, and J decided they were bored of Minecraft and wanted to experiment with other aspects of the game that the general population wouldn't even consider touching. Together, they decided to found a griefing group known as the Moles. The moles had a humble beginning, and they would primarily just grief microscopic servers from free hosting platforms, such as Atronos and Minehut, for their own enjoyment and entertainment. Little did they know that in the not-so-distant future, they would dethrone Paris Job, creator of Mirai, as the deadliest Minecraft hacker. Everybody has to start somewhere, and for the moles, they found their start in custom NBT items. These are items that when used, have custom attributes, for example, a never-ending firework, or a frog that summons a million withers if it gets near a player. These items can do crazy things such as kill other players while they're in creative mode or even spectator mode, cause a server to lag really badly, give anybody slash off with the click of a button, and much more. Now obviously, Minecraft servers aren't just going to let you input any commands you want and generate these items on their server. So what the moles did is they made these items in a single player world, used the feature of saving a hotbar slot in creative mode, then they would go onto the server that they'd choose to attack, take the items out of their creative hotbar slot, and use those items to cause incomprehensible amounts of damage to these small servers. After griefing a few hundred of these small servers, the moles started to garner some public attention for their antics. This was the moles' first taste of notoriety, and they loved it. They wanted to do whatever they could to stay on top of the relevancy chart, and this included changing their methods of griefing these servers. The moles switched over from NBT crashing to Forsaw, and with the abilities of an admin right on their fingertips, they decided to go to town. As more servers fell, the moles' reputation only grew larger. But unbeknownst to them, this very mindset of chasing notoriety would light a fuse in their brains that would start their descent from a small griefing group into a malicious team of hackers. The moles wanted to switch their targets from small Minehut servers to the entire Minehut community, and they started off with an attack that most skids would consider the pinnacle of their career. The moles started to run an ad bot which spammed every Minehut lobby encouraging people to download a new and fun PvP resource pack. However, this was an unofficial resource pack which was not produced by Minehut and not hosted on their site. While looking innocent on the surface, this resource pack actually sent a request to the pack's location using the player's UUID. This would send the user's IP address and username to a Discord webhook, giving all their information directly to the moles. This meant that they could geolocate thousands of Minecraft players with just the click of a button. To be specific, the moles IP logged over 5,000 people in the first 12 hours. Minehut obviously did not appreciate this and swiftly disabled all external resource packs by self-hosting every official Minehut resource pack that they endorse. This stunt caused all eyes to turn to the moles. Players hated them, skids adored them, and Minehut feared what would happen next. For their next attack, the moles wanted to find a key aspect of Minehut to exploit for their gain. So they got to thinking, Minehut has to make money some way. Offering tons of free servers for everybody to use would not be a viable business plan. The company would simply go bankrupt within a couple of days. After a couple hours of brainstorming, a light bulb went off in their heads, and they got a genius idea. Sometimes when you connect to a Minehut server, you're first taken to a separate server managed by Minehut. This server has several paid advertisements surrounding the character, and these ads play for about 10 seconds before you're redirected to the actual server you wanted to play on. Minehut switches these ads out regularly, and this is one of their primary sources of income, generating them millions of dollars in yearly revenue. Unfortunately for Minehut, this system gave the moles their next big idea. The moles started by building a one-to-one -one replica server that looked exactly like Minehut's intermediate ad server. Then the moles discovered a chat exploit, which would make it appear that Minehut had broadcasted a message to everybody, when in reality it was just a generic chat message sent from an alt account. The moles combined these two aspects with a very simple phishing website designed to look like Minehut's homepage, and they broadcasted a message saying that Minehut had partnered with Heroku app to give 5,000 credits to new players. When unsuspecting victims would click this advertisement in chat, they would be redirected to the mole's fake intermediate ads page and be prompted for a sign-in to gain their 5,000 credits. Because everything looked official, these players would input their login information into this phishing site and get their details stolen. 
After the moles gained these credentials, they would log into the stolen accounts and use the linked credit cards to buy every single paid mod and plugin on the Minehut marketplace and gave them away for free. In addition to this, the team used the stolen credit cards to give away over 6.4 million credits worth of ranks on Minehut. A Moles member discovered a way to give out the ranks without them getting removed even when a chargeback was made from one of the stolen credit cards, which meant Minehut had to eat the loss. When the dust settled, Minehut had lost almost $50,000. But what happened next is even worse. Two members of the moles known as S5 and Talpa created a sophisticated malware which bypassed VirusTotal's flagging systems, resulting in a 0 out of 64, making it look entirely legitimate. Then they went to flooding lobbies again, but this time, instead of it being a giveaway, they told users that they would be permanently banned from Minehut if they could not solve a CAPTCHA. Users were directed to yet another phishing website, where they would be told to download a PDF file containing a string of text, which they were then instructed to paste into the box on the website to complete the CAPTCHA. When users downloaded this PDF file, they were actually given a .pif file, which looks like a PDF, but when you download it, it's actually an .exe in disguise. When opened, the file instantly opened Notepad with a random string in it, so the victim wouldn't get suspicious but in the background, it was executing malicious code onto the victim's computer. When the file is opened, it would download a PowerShell script in the background, which we will call PS1. PS1 would wait 15 minutes, so the antivirus would not get suspicious and flag the PIF file. Then, it would download another PowerShell script, which we will call PS2. PS2 was malware, and it would be hidden in the Windows startup folder disguising itself as a Windows driver to not arouse suspicion. Eventually, when the device rebooted, PS2 would execute and it would scan for valuable information on the device such as downloads, files, and browser cookies. Once these were identified, PS2 would exfiltrate them off the device and send the data to a private Discord webhook controlled by the moles. This malicious attack managed to trick hundreds of users, but instead of stealing money from Minehut this time, the moles decided to rob the people they attacked, and made it out with several thousand dollars. One of the members spoke to me and explained one of the methods they used to steal the money from the victims. I logged into the Tebex accounts of the victims and wired the money to my friends who acted as mules. I then downloaded the victims' Minehut server files and deleted all Minehut hosted backups and transferred their server name to a different holder account. This was to ensure that they would not cancel the payment, and while I did not commit credit card fraud, I cannot speak for the other members. The moles were in too deep. They knew it was only a matter of time before they got arrested if they stayed on this path. So they decided to do one final attack that would cement their legacy as the deadliest Minecraft hackers. The moles managed to get Minehut's parent company stock price to drop by over 50%, which ended up costing the company $12 million. Paris Jaw, the mastermind behind the Mirai botnet, which is widely regarded as the single most damaging event to ever stem from Minecraft, has officially been dethroned by a group of teenagers wanting to watch the world burn. Mirai only resulted in $8.6 million in damages, which is a staggering $3.4 million behind the mole's attack on Minehut. And the way they did it will shock you. For whatever reason, when you went to log into Minehut's website, there was no CAPTCHA. This means making automated programs was extremely easy. The moles set up a system where a robot would create an account and then create a server. This server would automatically install a software developed by the moles, which would make that server create two more servers. These servers would also create two more servers and so on. After an extremely brief period of time, a chain reaction started, which resulted in over 15,000 servers being made, and all of them were ready to be activated with just the push of a button. Immediately upon activating the servers, Minehut was bricked. This was the largest and most successful denial of service attack launched on Minehut and it all happened from their own server room. Nobody was able to create or open new servers and the existing server's speed dropped so much that you couldn't even mine a block of dirt without lag. Minehut swiftly shut down all servers and put the website and hub into an unscheduled maintenance. This maintenance lasted for only 18 hours, but during that time, investors saw the chaos that had unfolded and sold their stock. 
By the time Minehut was back online and running, it was too late. The stock price had started to plummet, and when the dust settled, the stock price had dropped from $37.60 all the way down to $19.50, which resulted in a net loss of $12.1 million. And this marks the day that the moles established themselves as the deadliest Minecraft hackers.